हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड इवनिंग आम आरती आई एम गोइंग टू डिक्टेट यू एक्सरसाइज नाइन एंड टेन फ्रॉम प्रोग्रेसिव मार्च प्लीज लाइक द वीडियो सब्सक्राइब द चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन फाइव सेकेंड स्टार्ट मिस्टर स्पीकर इफ एग्रीकल्चरल प्रोडक्शन हैज टू बी मैक्सिमाइज द ग्रेटेस्ट अटेंशन हैज टू बी गिवेन टू four factors first seeds should be for the right quality fertilizers and high yielding varieties of seeds then improved pesticides and water as regards these four factors it is interesting to see that government or the ministry does not appear to have rapid any attention to certain mal practices that have crept into these matters take for instance seeds there is no mention at all of the fact that a large percentage of these so called improved or high yielding varieties of seeds are adulterated what steps has government taken in this regard is it not of vital importance that seeds should be pure and unadulterated their effect on production is very great therefore from this point alone all possible steps should be taken to prevent adulteration the farmer suffers because he spends money on costly seeds in order that he may get the best possible yield but finds that the seeds are adulterated why has not government taken up this question in its own hands every state government interferes in this matter in fact multiplication of seeds is done under the orders of the agriculture department in a state after a state and yet when it comes to their quality control adequate machinery does not exist then you come to the question of fertilizers again these are of vital importance what has happened at one single stroke government has doubled the prices of fertilizers and expects farmers to procure them in the required quantities knowing fully well also that government fixes the prices of what they produce at a level which makes it impossible for the farmers to pay these high prices for fertilizers the previous speaker referred to the agricultural prices commission the commission has fixed the price say of wheat at a certain level without taking into account the cost of production of the farmer yesterday a member of the advisory committee to the agricultural prices commission stated that he has sent his resignation because what use it was to remain in the con- committee if no importance was ever attached to the advice tendered on such a basic matter as cost of production if cost of production is not taken into account i would like to state here that it is difficult to see on what basis the agricultural prices commission fixed the prices several agricultural universities have carried out surveys and the results of these surveys are available punjab university carried out a survey and other research students have also and have pointed out what the cost of production would be for instance in regard to wheat they have arrived at the finding that the cost of production would be in the region of are is 320 yet the procurement price is 
fixed at RS305. What is the justification for this in the face of the fact that the price of fertilizer, an important input, has been doubled? The prices have increased considerably and many types of pesticides that are in the market today are adulterated. What steps have the government taken to ensure that the pesticides that in the market for sale to the farmers are of the right quality and are not adulterated ones? Is there any machinery in regard to drugs at least in a name there is a drug controller in every state to see that the drugs sold are not adulterated in regard to pesticides have not you set up any machinery to ensure that the pesticides are not adulterated last but not the least important factor for maximization of agricultural production is water. They say they have programs for increasing irrigation facilities. During the fourth plan, they wanted to bring in a considerable additional area under irrigation so that they could have assured water supply. They have similar programs in the fifth plan. Why is it that a number of these projects are not completed within the time schedule that is laid down? Why is it that a number of most desirable projects are not even taken in hand for years for one region or another and the majority of them are held up because of interstate water disputes? What steps have been taken by the government to resolve those disputes? They say that they have no powers. What is the good of their saying? So when the ruling party is today in a position to pass any legislation that it desires, even to amend the constitution as often as it likes, and yet is does not take steps to settle these issues which would result in self-sufficiency in food grains and also in respect of many vital cash crops needed for important industries. Why is it that we are unable to take any steps to settle these disputes and allow them to continue with no end in sight. A little while ago, I think a statement was placed on the table of the house saying that there were 157 projects outstanding in the scheme. Stop.